Yes, I talk about external GPUs a lot, but I feel like I really haven't provided you with some concrete evidence as to why an external GPU is beneficial. Now, unfortunately, as I've mentioned before, Final Cut Pro 10 does not currently utilize external GPUs in any sort of meaningful way. But there is one app in particular, that being DaVinci Resolve, that really takes advantage of external GPUs to the point where I can show you concrete evidence as to why it's so beneficial. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of using an external GPU with DaVinci Resolve. Now, I will preface this by saying that I am not a DaVinci Resolve expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I can show you some of the benefits, including timeline performance and export performance. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to use this right here. This is the 2017 base model MacBook Pro with Intel Iris 640 graphics. So in a nutshell, it is basically the worst case modern Mac scenario for working with high quality video in DaVinci Resolve. And you're going to see how terrible it is just using that integrated GPU. And I'm going to compare it with not just one, but actually two external GPUs with this MacBook Pro. And uh, you're going to see some very interesting results. So here is DaVinci Resolve. I have it loaded up on my 2017 MacBook Pro. So let's zoom in and let's check this thing out. The first thing you're gonna see is when I perform a playback on the timeline with some effects, look at that frame rate. It is absolutely atrocious, about four frames per second on this timeline. Now granted, I do have some effects. I have some color correction on there, uh, but still <laughs> look how choppy the playback is. Crazy. So you're getting around four frames per second when using the integrated Intel Iris Graphics 640 on the 2017 MacBook Pro. It's absolutely unusable. Um, now, what happens when we try to export a video? I'm using Apple ProRes 422 HQ, a 1080p video. I'm gonna export this, start the render. Render. And let's look at the, uh, the estimated time remaining. An hour. Yes, an hour to export this eight minute video. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have an hour to spare to wait on a video to export. That is really terrible. So obviously using DaVinci Resolve in any meaningful way on a 2017 base model MacBook Pro is just out of the question. But that's where this comes in. This is an external GPU from Sonnet, the eGraphics Breakaway Box 650. I have an RX Vega 64 loaded into this thing. And then I also have this right here. This is the Akidio Node Pro, and I have an RX 580 loaded into this. That's right, I have two external GPUs ready to go. Now the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is that if you go into the preferences, you can actually target specific GPUs. That includes external GPUs. Now DaVinci Resolve Studio allows you to target multiple GPUs at the same time. And that is a $299 purchase, same price as Final Cut Pro 10. Now Blackmagic Design also offers a free version of DaVinci Resolve. And you cannot use multiple GPUs with it, but you can still target an external GPU, a single external GPU, which is still awesome and still provide you with some massive performance gains as you're gonna see in this video. So we're gonna connect the two external GPUs to our MacBook Pro. The first one, the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box 650, and then the Akidio Node Pro. Just plug in the Thunderbolt 3 cable. Uh, the MacBook Pro has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so it takes up both ports to connect both of these external GPUs. And you can see that Mac OS does recognize both. So I have the Vega 64 and the 580. And if we go into activity monitor and select GPU history, we can see all three GPUs, including the integrated graphics, along with the Vega 64 and the 580. So we are locked and loaded. Let's go ahead and load up DaVinci Resolve Studio. Again, I'm using Studio because I want to target multiple GPUs. The free version allows you to target just a single GPU, but it's still really good because obviously you can target something like an eGPU with a very powerful discrete graphics card inside. So once DaVinci Resolve Studio is loaded up, just go to Preferences, select Hardware Configuration, GPU Processing, select OpenCL, select Manual for Selection Mode, and there you can go in and target specific GPUs. It sees both of my eGPU setups here, so I have both of those selected. Click on Save, and then it will prompt you to restart Resolve. So we just go in and quit. 
and we'll reopen it like this. And now you're going to see the benefits of targeting those two GPUs. So first and foremost on the timeline, notice playback. It's now super smooth, locked at 30 frames per second. Yeah, that is a far cry from the four frames per second. The little juddery, stuttery thing that we had going on earlier with that integrated graphics. And you can see that the Vega 64 and the 580 are both being put to work. So let's try out exporting this video. So we're going to start the render and click render. And you can see the export time. No, it's not an hour. It's like five minutes or so. So that is a huge improvement over the integrated graphics. You can really see the benefit of using an external GPU with DaVinci Resolve right off the bat. Now, even if we only target a single GPU, single external GPU, so we're going to just target the 580, you're still going to notice a substantial improvement when compared to the integrated graphics. So let's restart Resolve and start playback on the timeline. And look, folks, we are locked at 30 frames per second. Again, a far cry from that stuttery experience we had earlier with the iGPU. Now we're going to render. You can see it's not as good as we had with the dual GPUs. You can see I'm only targeting the 580 in this case, but it's still really good. This really paints the picture and tells the story. Here is the chart comparing the export. So we have a plain export and we also have an, an export with effects and color on the timeline. Notice that super long bar there for the Intel Iris. Uh, for the uh, effects and color export. Notice how much of a difference using an eGPU with the 2017 MacBook Pro. Again, it is just night and day. I mean, what can you say about that? It's just, it's crazy how much difference it makes. Now, just a brief interjection. I don't ask this often, but if you do like these videos, please leave me a thumbs up and also subscribe because it really does help the channel grow. And I can't lie, it's a motivating factor as well. So let's continue. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit. We're gonna try this out with the iMac Pro. We're going to connect the Akidio node and the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box to the iMac Pro, which already has a pretty beefy GPU inside that Vega 56. You can see the iMac Pro has a dual bus setup for Thunderbolt 3, so you wanna make sure you connect each GPU to a different bus on your iMac Pro, otherwise you'll run into issues. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. Now, you can see all three of the GPUs here. You have the integrated, which is the, the discrete Vega 56. You have the Vega 64 and the 580. We're going to go into the preferences, hardware configuration, and target all three of these GPUs there. This is crazy. All right, so now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and obviously play back on the timeline. It's going to be super smooth. It's actually smooth regardless if you're using eGPUs or not because the iMac Pros uh, Vega 64 or Vega 56 is actually really, really good. Uh, but you're going to notice that export times do benefit, especially when I show you the uh, charts here in just a second. We're going to go ahead and render. And this is the same thing we were rendering earlier on the MacBook Pro. Notice you're at about three, less than three minutes, folks. <laughs> it's crazy speed there. And you can see that the frames per second actually doubles real-time output, more than doubles real-time output. You can see those GPUs working in concert with each other. So now, notice the export times here. Obviously, smaller is better. You can see, basically, this paints the picture that the uh, iMac Pro is still a beast re without external GPUs. But once you add in a couple of GPUs there, you see dividends are definitely paid. So you DaVinci Resolve users are really going to love using eGPUs on your Mac. So yes, I've been super excited about external GPUs, probably a little bit over the top, but as you can see from this video, you can really reap some major benefits from external graphics, especially on lesser machines like the MacBook Pro, for instance. And while it's true that Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't yet support external GPUs, I think this video really shows why it's such an exciting prospect. You can take a machine like the 2017 MacBook Pro that's basically unusable when working with uh, lots of effects and color correction on the timeline and make it into a usable machine that performs really well. So what do you guys think? If you appreciated this video, please leave me a thumbs up to let me know. Also subscribe if you want more content like this or other Mac and iOS related content on a weekly basis. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.